taken from Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. Let me try the right one. Yep. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman, a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the, in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she fell felt in her body that she was freed from all her suffering. At once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him, and he turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear told, fear told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Ignoring what they said, Jesus told the synagogue ruler, Don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And when they came to the home of the synagogue ruler, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him, went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha Nam, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. And immediately the girl stood up and walked around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this. And he told them to give her something to eat. Here ends the reading of the morning scripture. So as we read in our scripture for today, we find two miracles that Jesus performed. The first being the healing of the woman who had been dealing with bleeding for over 12 years, and the second being the resurrection of the daughter of Jairus. And as I was studying the scripture for this week, there were three things that came to mind that I believe we can gain a better understanding from these scriptures. The first is the power of faith. You see, in both cases, the people needed to have faith in Jesus. That was the most paramount thing in order for healing to occur. First with the daughter of Jairus. You see, if he didn't have faith in Jesus to heal his daughter, he wouldn't even have bothered seeking out Jesus to ask him to come and heal her. And we see this idea of faith play out with the woman as well. This woman had endured, endured years and years of bleeding. She had seen every doctor she could find, and they could do nothing for her. She had spent all of her money in search of a cure. And not only did they not find a cure for her, her condition got worse over time. Now, I want you to think about this, and those of you that have some sort of chronic illness, or pain, I think you can really understand where this woman was coming from. If you had spent the last 12 years of your life in constant agony, if you had searched out all the doctors you could find 
and spend all the money that you had trying to get better only to get worse. Can you imagine how low your state of mind must be? It would be extremely frustrating to say the least if you had tried all these things and they all failed. Don't you think it would have been so much easier for this woman to simply have given up? To have taken the mindset of, how can this man heal me? How can this Jesus do anything for me when none of the doctors have been able to do anything for me? But the woman does not think this way. She goes the complete other way. If I can only touch the hem of his garment, that will be enough to heal me. I don't need him to speak to me. I don't need him to put his hands on me to heal me. I just need to be close enough to touch his garments and then I will be healed. When was the last time that you had faith in Jesus like this? Now I know it can be easy for us to allow the difficulties of this world to pull us down. And we all do indeed have our own problems that we bear. However, brothers and sisters, this is the sort of faith that we must have in our own lives. We need to approach things from this standpoint. We have to work to develop faith like this woman. We have to have the faith that says, I just need to reach out to him and know that, he, that I will be healed. We need to have the faith that says, I just need to reach out to him and I know that his power will be enough for me. The second thing that I think is important in this scripture is the way that Jesus reacts when the woman touches him. You see, Jesus knew that some of his power had gone out from him. He could feel that. And he could have easily just gone about his way. Nobody else knew, just Jesus and the woman. He could have said nothing. He could have simply thought to himself, awesome, another person healed and another person has come with faith. But Jesus doesn't do that. He stops in the middle of this crowd and says, Who is it that touched me? And his, his disciples respond, kind of indignant, What do you mean, who touched me? You're surrounded by people. There must be a hundred people here that have touched you in the last few minutes. How did you even notice that someone touched you? But then the woman comes forward and falls on her knees and confesses that she was the one that had touched Jesus. And he responds, daughter, your faith has made you well. Now, why does Jesus bother doing this? Why make a big deal out of this at all? Why would he want to single out this woman after healing her? Does Jesus do this so that others know his power? Did he do it so that other, she could be seen as a witness to his awesomeness? Well, Jesus was a humble servant. He didn't need anyone to look at the great deeds that he had done and be impressed so that his own ego would be fed. Indeed, he did so many more miracles than we are told about in the Bible. And it's, uh, he often told people that he healed heaven. Don't tell anyone that I did this for you. So then why bother making a scene with this woman, especially when he has to get somewhere to go and heal this other little girl? So as I was studying this week, I came across an article written by Alicia Reitman. And in this article, there was an idea that I had really never considered about this woman. You see, she would have been an outcast. In the Jewish faith, for these 12 years that she was bleeding, she would have been seen as unclean the entire time. Now think about how lonely that must have made her. How difficult her life was, not only due to the disease that she had, but because she was seen as unclean by all those that were around her. You see, this is why Jesus takes the time to talk to the woman. And this is why he specifically says to her, Daughter, you are healed. Jesus wants the people to know 
all around this woman that she is no longer an outcast. She is now a member of the family of God. And I think we can take away something great from this as well. You see, no matter what your past has been, no matter how much of an outcast you have been or you feel like you are right now, Jesus wants to call you daughter or son. And we want you to know as well that you are welcome here to become our sister or brother in Christ. Because there are no perfect people in this church, just sinners that have been given the grace of Jesus Christ. And there is always room for one more. Amen, brothers and sisters? Amen. Now, the final thing I want you to think about today is this. We do not serve a man. We serve the Son of God. Our Messiah is, just not, is not just a person that walked the earth 2,000 years ago and showed people a good way to live their lives. Now, he did do that. Don't get me wrong. However, I think as modern Christians, sometimes we allow ourselves to simply view Jesus in those terms, as a man who once walked the earth with a good message. But we have to remind ourselves that our Messiah was the Son of God. Indeed, God made into human form. And I think sometimes we allow ourselves to forget that. And I know that there are skeptics that will say, well, okay, maybe he did do miracles back then. But he doesn't do miracles now. Well, my answer to that assumption is this. Simply look around you. There are things that happen in this world every day that cannot be explained. There are people suddenly healed, and there are people that turn their lives from the absolute pit of despair when they hear of his love. There are great things that happen all the time. And now I know that we hear about the bad things more than the good, but I promise that if you take the time to look for the good in this world, it is there. So then let us go forth and proclaim the God of miracles, the healer of brokenness and the restorer of our lives in all that we do. My challenges for you this week are these. How can you grow your faith? What is just one way that you can grow your faith this week so that it's like the woman's or like Jairus? And do you want to be a part of the family of God? Is it time for you to make that declaration? And if so, today I ask that you would come forward during our closing song, because I want you to know that you have a family here waiting for you to welcome you into that family of God, no matter what your past is and no matter where you find yourself today. Amen.